Rogers, Michael, and Don, how you doing? How are you guys? I'm fine. We're doing we're doing well. We're doing better, I guess, than DraftKings and FanDuel. So, <laughs> yeah. legally, what does this mean? I mean, what's the next step here? Well, you know, you kind of saw this coming. Uh, you know, once uh, uh, that story broke about a month or so ago about the inside guy who uh, supposedly had a little inside information and won some money, uh, you know, this was their worst nightmare. So you saw this coming. What's going to happen is this is the attorney general for the state of New York under New York laws, gentlemen, not under federal laws, has claims, now claims, that this is an act of gambling, which is illegal in the state of New York. And he wants them to cease and desist, and that means it sets it up for, uh, you know, what our what our what lawyers uh, love most of all, a good lawsuit. And so, what they'll fight back and say, DraftKings will fight back and say, uh, uh, this is not a game of uh, of chance; it's a game of skill. Um, and then they're going to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful court hearing in which people will come in and testify as to why it's either a game of skill or a game of chance. I mean, it's going to be the closest we're ever going to have to having a courtroom that's a casino. What I don't get is the whole game of chance. It takes a talent to play poker. Now, you still got to get the right cards, but if I've played poker for 50 years and you've played it for one day, I will be better than you. Same thing with horse racing. So, you, I, you know, guys, I was thinking about that in, you know, in, in anticipation of your show, and let me come up with to tell you what I think this. I think, I mean, first of all, you're absolutely right. There are uh, people who play this much more skillfully, whether it be poker, fantasy sports, uh, horse racing, who play this much more skillfully than others do. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that that's the story. I mean, some of this, some of these people, what they do is they take a game of chance because at the end of the day, poker, uh, horse racing, uh, fantasy football is based on certain chances, certain things happening that are totally out of our control. Uh, but some of them, some people who participate in these things, are much better at anticipating uh, or figuring out those parts which are out of our control, figuring them into their formula, if you will, and being much more skillful um, and having a much better chance of winning uh, than others do. So some, so I guess what I'm saying is for some people, this is a true game of chance. You know, the guy that sits down and, and, says, uh, and laughs and giggles and, and puts a buck up and... Uh, and, you know, shuts his eyes or picks his favorite players, um, you know, that's perhaps a more of a game of chance than the guy who sits down and, uh, you know, puts a lot of time and effort and uh, a lot of history into this kind mm -hmm. of thing. And, uh, you know, instead of playing a duck, a buck may be playing $5,000 um, to increase his chances. Uh, that guy is uh, is much closer to saying, you know, this is a game of skill rather than a game of chance. And the other thing, Roger, it's so easy to say, all right, um, people affiliated with an organization can't play. Obviously, the players can't play, general managers. But there's so many people that can consider themselves insiders, right? I mean, I do the pre and post for the Jets. I'm going to have more inside information to play a Jet on FanDuel than John Q. Public. So the lack of regulation, I think, is the concern. So, And that's right. And so, so what should be known about that? I mean, look, I've always thought that the, the, where I thought this was going to explode was where they were find they found out that players who I suppose have the ultimate inside information or maybe coaches or medical staff had the inside information and they knew that uh, you know a certain ball player who is a starter uh, and has had a good season is a little nicked up and maybe won't be getting the ball as much this week as they would in the past. That's the kind of information that we all should know if we're going to have an equal chance at this kind of thing. But the fact is that rarely would, I, would any of us, would all of us know that kind of information. And that's where I thought this was going to pop up. And the other place I thought it was going to pop up was, you know, ball players playing this. Uh, look, that's just a, an inherent conflict of interest. Well, oh, how about and, owners um, owning it? I mean, Robert Kraft and Jerry Jones have, have big stakes in this. Well, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't understand that when it happened. Uh, I mean, I understood the idea that they thought this was a great investment, and apparently it is. Um, but I thought it was a conflict of interest, and I was surprised that the league uh, went along with that. But I suppose that, uh, you know, the league is only the league when it wants to be the league. You right. know, when it doesn't want it to be the league, it's a, it's a bunch of individual teams. So, 
um, you know, that's what I thought the answer to that was. Our ESPN legal analyst, Roger Kosick, is our guest on the show. There's a couple of things that kind of stand out to me. The letter that uh, they sent um, Nigel Eklis of uh, FanDuel, uh, Schneiderman says that finally FanDuel's um, – Daily fantasy sports are creating the same public health and economic concerns as other forms of gambling, including addiction. Then why doesn't he do this to horse racing? Why doesn't he stop the sale of liquor? Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. And also, for him to say, he, if, if he had said, we're, we're going to discontinue this in New York because there's no overseer of it. There's no regulatory commission so that we know right. it's on the up and up. But he said, because it's gambling, it's a game of chance. How could right. he then, with a straight face, allow lotto and any kind of lottery to go on, which is a strict game of chance with no skill involved whatsoever? Well, I mean, one, re one answer he would give you would be <clears throat> lottery. the lottery has been approved by the New York State Legislature, and therefore, uh, whatever it is, it, it's legal. Uh, I mean, there can mm -hmm. be exemptions to get, to gambling, and one of the exemptions is, you know, lottery. And look, states make a lot of money off that lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, but believe me, FanDuel uh, and and any of these these football sites would be just delighted to pay some taxes, uh, uh, extra taxes to the state if they could get the state off their back. Uh, believe me, that that's the least of their worries. Uh, and and ask for regulation. Believe me, this is one of the few businesses you'll ever see that's begging for regulation. They just want to stay in business. So, yeah, is there hypocritical, you know, things that happen? Yeah. I mean, I can't give you answers as to why some people, why he woke up one morning and said, you know, this is ruining America or certainly ruining the state of New York. Um, I suspect that there have been some complaints. Uh, I suspect that people have done what they always do in gambling sites, that there's some people who are more susceptible and a little mm -hmm. go in over their head and lose more than they should. Um, you know, you've seen these sites. Uh, you never see a guy come up and say, hi, you know, I spent all weekend playing fantasy football and I lost the rent. Right. I mean, you always hear the guy that says, listen, I did it, and the only difference between me and you is that I played. If you played, you'd be a bazillionaire too. So, you know... Uh, Look, do I, you know, I can't give you an answer as to, uh, you know, why, what he was thinking, but, you know, these kinds of things cause problems. But, you know, at the end, it's a philosophical discussion about whether, you know, we should take care of ourselves or the state should take care of now, us. Now, Roger, what's to stop the state of New York from now turning around and coming up with their own fan duel or DraftKings and then legalizing it and, and literally stealing away the idea from FanDuel and DraftKings, and now be able to use it because they can turn around and legalize it the same way that they did with a lottery? It's a great question, and I, 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 I'm certainly you know, not expert enough to tell you about New York uh, state politics or, or what the regulations are about what things can be done and what they can't, but uh, it would be, I think, um, I, I think they'd have some problems. I, th I mean, I think the hypocrisy of putting these people out of business because of uh, fear for what's going to happen to the general populace and that they have a duty, therefore, as the state to protect their citizenry, and then going ahead and going into business for themselves, I think that well, would cause such an uproar that uh, at the end but, of the day the voters wouldn't want much of that. Well, if you think about it, if you go back to the 30s and 40s, they ran numbers in New York, right? I mean, the mob actually had a lottery. They put a stop well, to it, yeah, and now you've got the lottery in New York. <laughs> well, that was that's right. The mob <laughs> did run the numbers and then right off the newspapers, and and, right. and, uh, uh, and now they woke up one day and they said, but the but the lottery was never, uh, uh, you know, it was it was always an illegal act. And I guess what happened was they woke up one day and said, you know what? There's a lot of money to be made. We're going to take it over. Uh, you know, uh, legislatures and legislators are what they are. But I think in this case. You know, putting a legitimate – it's different to say the mob was running it, we're going to take it over, as opposed to – you know, the mob was also running alcohol up until repeal in 1932. Right. Um, and some states to this day, you know, are in the alcohol business in the sense, in the sense that the, they run – the states run and sell the alcohol. So, you know, I, I just think that in this case where you had something that was – that the state, under your hypothetical, would put out of business – uh, by claiming that it's uh, it's just uh, you know, harmful to many people, and then go ahead and say, okay, but now we can do it. It's not as harmful. I, I just I just don't think they get away with it. All right, final thing: people in New York that want to play FanDuel and DraftKings now, is there going to be an appeal where they can actually play FanDuel? Well, I think there absolutely will be an appeal. Uh, the question is, I think some 
one of these, FanDuel or both, will go into court and ask to get a, a stay or an injunction to prevent uh, this, the uh, attorney general from going forward with this. And and uh, I would suspect that most likely they will get it. Did now, they get a stay uh, in Nevada? But, but, but it's not, you know, then you're going to have a trial. Then you're going to have, I mean, some the, the attorney general is going to have to come in there at some point and say, this is a game of chance and it violates our laws. And the other side is going to come in and say, Judge, this is a game of skill. It doesn't violate our laws. I think every gamble is a game of skill and chance. There's no way to say it's one and not the other. Well, you know, uh, 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 Damon Runyon, you know, who's a, an old sports, old, old, old New York sports writer, you know, and wrote great stories. And, and uh, he once said in one of his books, he said, you know, all of life is six to five against you. <laughs> So when you think about it, most of you get up in the morning, you talk about what is a gamble and what isn't a gamble. You know, when you leave the house it's and a cross the street, life is a gamble. So And there's you know, skill to it. You look both ways, but a car could go 90 miles an hour. There's a chance. There's a chance. So, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm of the opinion, you know, I, I think the uh, people want to play fan duel as long as they have a fair shot at it, as long as it's not it's regulated so that some people don't have a better shot at it than others. Um, and it's all equal, um, which, you know, no matter how hard you try, you're never going to succeed in making it all equal. Look at the stock market. I mean, that's just, just talk about gambling. Right. Um, so, you know, it's the same thing. Some people say, well, look, I put a lot of money, a lot of time into, the, into learning the stock market. I really, really know the stock market. But, you know, that doesn't guarantee much.